With Crimson Dragon released, we can now be able to get some Val 13 star weapons, in which we can upgrade to our 14 star Atlas weapons, and more importantly, some new S grade abilities that we can add to augment on our weapon. In this video, I want to go over how to do the urgent quests, what things you should be focusing on, and some tips and tricks as well. And of course, before we do begin, make sure to drop a like on the video if you did find it helpful, as it does help the channel and the video out. And more importantly, if you haven't subscribed, I do recommend to subscribe because I'll be posting more videos and gameplay that will help you in your PSO2 grind. And thank you for using this video as your Crimson Dragon guide. And with that, let's begin. And in the beginning, it's just a standard mobbing phase. We just run down the bridge, avoid the damage and the fire blast that come towards you. And just try to kill the mobs as fast as you can with your MPA and quickly get to the boss. Once you finish killing all the mobs, you'll get onto the jump pad and finally face off with the dragon. Do be careful of his fire blast. You can use iframes to go through it or you can use any counters for your specific class. In this phase, we should be focusing the left foot. Uh, unfortunately in this MPA, there's like everyone attacking other places. A few people were attacking the left foot, but everyone should be attacking one foot by itself so we can quickly get the blue hearts or the blue weak points that shows up on his chest. Once the blue aura shows up on their chest, you're going to want to pick up the Laconium Sword and then hold it down to the final charge. So you'll see it actually spin around and then you'll hold it backwards kind of. And that's when you know you're at the final charge. Once you hit that weak point, it should be exposed and turn orange. And once it's opened, you do maximum damage like normal. And it is a weak point, so you can use your weak point bonuses on that specific spot as well. Once that weak point breaks and it's gone, you'll drop down and his wing will be blue, one of them. It can be either left or right, just be prepared to hit it and break it. And once you break it, he will fly away and then start his meteor showers. And make sure to be using the cannons to break all these meteors. You could use the sword to break them. I'm just doing that as an example here, but I do 100% recommend using the cannon since it doesn't have as high DPS and you might even fail the damage check if too many people are using the sword here. So make sure to pay attention to who's using the sword if you really want to do it. And if you see more than one person doing it, then try to focus on using a cannon instead so we can actually blow it up. The only time I would recommend using the sword to break the big meteor ball is if the wing isn't broken. Here it is broken, so you technically don't even need to be using the sword on the meteor. Uh, so you can do maximum damage on that wing. So once you break that wing, he'll fly back up. And then you have to take a second wing if you didn't break it in the first phase, of course. So here his wing is blue. So I'm going to shoot a couple times on the meteor with the cannon because it's high DPS. And then once I notice this is enough damage here, I'll switch over to the sword quickly. So I'll have perfect timing of whenever they do come down and I can break that wing so everyone can do their maximum damage on the weak point. So once you're done with that, make sure to head to the middle of the roof. There will be a jump pad waiting for you. You'll leap over and here you'll have blue weak points. So we have to break them as soon as possible. Since I already have the sword, I'm just going to quickly break them for my team. So everyone can do their maximum damage, of course. And that's the biggest part about this urgent quest. When I was running this before, I noticed a lot of people had the sword, but they weren't breaking the weak points. So make sure that if you ever do pick up that sword, you're breaking those weak points as soon as possible. So we don't have to uh, sit here hitting no damage on those uh, non-exposed weak points. I do drop my sword as well because my katana does way more damage. Uh, I wouldn't recommend using the sword as DPS, especially if you know your class is strong and your class has a lot of damage. Uh, usually most people just use the sword just to expose the weak points and then we just swap over to your main weapons, for example. And once you destroy those orange weak points on the dragon, he'll fall over and you'll have to attack the head. Make sure to do as much damage as you can on this part as well. If you do do enough damage, he'll get into an rage state and then fly over and then just zoom past you guys. Make sure to use your iframes or your counters to avoid getting one shotted or taking a lot of damage here as well. And like I mentioned with the sword, I knew the dragon's going to have blue weak points. So I did try to go for the sword here. I've noticed that was like three, two people that had the sword, uh, but in this whole time, uh, there weren't any swords available for anyone else to pick up and no one wasn't really breaking the weak points. So make sure if you do have the sword, 
or if you're not familiar with the sword, uh, make sure to understand in this video since we'll just be sitting here not doing enough damage. Uh, so I was lucky enough to get a sword here and then I was able to start breaking uh, the weak points. So that's the most important part about this urgent quest. You're not going to do any damage and you're just going to sit here uh, for a long time uh, if you don't break those weak points. So if you ever have the sword, make sure to practice that or at least understand that concept so we can get that damage in and finish these quests quick so we can get some nice drops. So it's a rinse and repeat of the same process we talked about before. Just do as much DPS as you can on those orange golden spots. And then once they break, we can start attacking the head again. So we ended up breaking the leg here. And now we can head over for the head as they're in a weakened state and do as much DPS as you can here. So for our group, we didn't have enough damage to uh, finish on the second part. Usually it's a two part phase if you have enough damage in your group, uh, but sometimes that can happen. So we just had to do it for the third time. This time we we're getting the tail and then we're doing our damage to break it to be able to uh, do damage on the head. Or if we did enough damage on the tail to the point where it'll, it'll get enraged to its final stage, uh, then that's when it'll be done. So as you can see here, I was attacking the tail and then it got into its enraged state. We didn't even break the tail yet because we still had enough damage to the point where we didn't have to break the tail to get into the final enraged state. And here, they just make a big fire box around you and then you just sit in the middle and then, like we said before, dodge his dashes or zooms into you by using your iframes or your counters for your class. Since I saw this sword here, I wanted to get a quick early break on the dragon's head just so we can expose it and everyone can do damage. So I just wait for his attack to come in. I counter just in case. And then I grab the sword and then quickly go for uh, the blue head to expose it to become orange. Of course, once it's exposed, you want to do as much damage as you can. I should have dropped the sword to use my katana for more damage. Uh, but I guess I just wanted to use this here because I knew the head will come up and I needed a better gap closer and the sword does have better range capabilities than the katana and we'll see if we can kill it fast enough this way so after doing enough dps it will fall over and of course you've completed the battle yahoo and now you can get some rare drops new augments and hopefully get your gains in so that's the end of the crash course of my urgent quest of the dragon so make sure to take all those tips into mind i know i didn't go over uh, the attacks itself because those are things that you can quickly learn uh he just does a lot of fireball attacks a lot of aoe so try to avoid that and he does do a flip where uh, katanas can't actually counter it uh, but sometimes it's kind of weird because of the positioning and it's not in front of you for example so just be careful on that part so of course, as always, if you did find this video helpful, make sure to subscribe since I'll be posting more videos and also drop a like as it does help the video out. Thanks for watching as always. Hope you guys have an awesome day and see you next time.